Welcome to r slash I don't work here lady, where we share stories about folks that are mistaken for employees by irate customers. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story, crazy thinks I work where I don't, breaks my SH, but I got 30 bucks. The second story, my second meeting with Siasaurus. The third story, manager wanted me to go to work, but I don't work there. Today's first story is, what a mess act one. Gather round, guys and dolls, as I spin the beginnings of a lovely tale of karma, an angry anti-hero, and not just one, nor two, but three, yes, three messes, all featuring the same Siasaurus. Small world, right? Mess number one begins with our anto hero and moi walking around the grocery store two weeks ago. As I've been mistaken for an employee at two separate stores before, I'm now increasingly wary of strangers approaching me and have started trying to turn off my customer service mindset outside of work. I wander into the frozen foods aisle, because ice cream, and practically shove myself into the freezer to find something specific. And that's where Siasaurus finds me. At first it started with humming, with a couple mmm <clears throat> peppered here and there. Weird but everyone shops different. Then we launch into foot tapping. I thought she was listening to music. Had to be a good song to tap your feet, right? My poor innocence. Excuse me. SH was so forceful I looked up. She was just glaring down at me. I took one earbud out to be polite obviously not holding true to my mantra of do not engage. Uh, yes? I've been effing standing here for 15 minutes. Is this how you treat customers? Can I get some GD help? I opened my mouth to respond but didn't get a chance. She huffed and scrunched her face. Ugh, forget it. Clearly useless. Where's unmemorable food item? Previous time this happened I froze. So far past that stage now. I tried keeping it short and sweet, but I felt my temper rising. Don't know. Don't work here. I shoved my earbud back in. I didn't even want the ice cream anymore. F it. I didn't process the actual feeling, but I watched my headphones hit the floor. I was shook. While I was still processing, she let me have it. Excuse me, are you actually lying to a customer? I don't care if you're on your break, I'm asking you for help. I genuinely thought for a brief moment, maybe I'm being punked. She was ridiculous. This had to be a joke. But then seeing my headphones on the floor, I got slightly angry. I still hadn't picked them up. That was a mistake. Listen, I just effing told you I don't work here. I'm not on break. I'm not off. I do not work here. She didn't process anything I'd said. It was like my words were just background music, something to slide along the beat of her continuing rant. Even if you are on break, customers come first. You definitely shouldn't be listening to music while you're working. You're really going to risk getting in trouble for a little music? I was about to reply, maybe add a little sass and let her know that nothing had actually been playing. I just never took them out of my ear. Before I had the chance, my mistake came back to haunt me. She looked down at my headphones still laying on the floor between us. With a quick look at me, she stomped hard as SH over them. I heard the crack as the right side was now completely disconnected, little speaker just rolling on the floor. I couldn't find the words at first. Did you just effing break my headphones? She gave me a nasty smirk. You're D right, let's see you ignore someone else now. I can't even really think of accurate things to describe my anger. You're going to give me money for those? Right now. Right effing now. You had no right. There was so much more I could have said, but in my fury not many other words could come to me. She got even angrier. You should have done your effing job. I was the wrong one to test today, B. In an attempt to not act out my thoughts, I imagined testing my hand on the side of her face. And then she gave me a gem. Actually, you know what? I'm getting your manager, and he and I are going to have a nice long chat about his previous employee's work ethic. She started walking away as she pulled out her phone. Better start looking for a new job. Nah, B, I want my money for these headphones. I stomped after her as she loudly tried to hold a conversation. I'm in your store. This little B refused to help me. You need to fire her. She eventually turned around and saw me following her and proceeded to freak the F out, screaming that I was stalking her and he needed to hurry. Thankfully, the manager found us with what I can only assume is echo location and tried to help. He saw her first and started attempting to calm her. I stepped closer and he looked at me and told me he would be right with me. He just needed to take care of this family emergency and it would only be a moment. Unfortunately for both of us, she was still screaming and drawing attention. This is her, the girl who wouldn't help me. He gave me a glance and returned her expectant look with confusion. Her voice started rising and I swear it could have broken glass. This girl, your employee. I waited for 30 minutes for her to acknowledge me. She was too busy listening to music to do her job. Uh, she doesn't work here. I've never seen her before in my life. His attention came back to me. Did you tell her you worked here? I told her multiple times that I didn't work here. She effing snatched my headphones and then broke them. 
I want compensation for my damaged property, or I'm calling the cops. I doubted they would come for some petty grocery store squabble, but it was the only scary repercussion I could think of. Before she could open her mouth, he dug out his wallet and handed me $30. Is that enough? I'm so, so sorry. Please, anything you were going to get, half off. Please don't call the police. I took the money and thanked him, but I absolutely wasn't done with Ciasaurus. I needed the last word. Everyone in the effing store is staring at you. You're an effing nutjob, lady. I had so much more I wanted to say. I wanted to point out in depth every single thing that screamed that I wasn't an employee. From my sweatpants to my hair, I wanted to go through each and every clue that could have been. But after all that, I was mentally exhausted. I decided to go home. She was still raging and spouting her own SH talking barrage, but I was so ready to go, I ignored it and walked out of the store. Got home, explained my SH afternoon to my SO, and thought up lots of snappy comebacks and alternate actions in the shower that night. Didn't think I'd ever have a reason to use them. Until I ran into her again three days later. The next story is, What a Mess, Act 2. Here we are, Act 2 of the mess that was Ciasaurus Rex. This time in surround sound, and at a movie theater. This happened three to four days after our first tango in the frozen food aisle, and trust me, it was just as wild as the first encounter. To preface our tale, through some movie theater connections, a close friend got myself, herself, my SO, and another friend tickets to a matinee. She had previously worked at the theater, and since she parted on good terms, the managers were okay with her sneaking some food and drinks for us. Movie theater friend will be Jay for story purposes. My other friend is Gina. Important to note, Gina and Jay look absolutely nothing alike. Now, the encounter. The movie had just ended. We were waiting around while Jay talked to some of her old co-workers, and Gina went to the bathroom. Eventually, Jay and my SO decided they hungered and left to find food. I stayed behind to wait for Gina. Things were looking good. The day was shaping out to be a great one. Sun was bright, it was good weather for once. Gina walked out of the bathroom and headed towards me. She had almost reached me when I heard it. Hey, you over there! I didn't want to believe. I didn't want to look. I took a glance from the corner of my eye, and there was Ciasaurus. How could I forget a face that infuriating? And she walked right past me, to speak to Gina. You! Theater 6 looks terrible. Someone spilled popcorn all over my seats, and dropped their soda on the floor. You need to come clean it up before the movie starts. Gina gave me a furrowed brow. Um, are you talking to me? I don't work here. Ciasaurus did not like being challenged. She grit her teeth, planted her feet, and squared her shoulders. She was ready. This time, this time she'd win. Excuse me, I saw you talking with the other theater people. I just want you to clean it up before the movie starts. Gina slowly inched towards me, taking small steps around C-Rex to reach me. I'm sorry, you might have me mistaken for my friend, but I really don't work here. C huffed and groaned inside. Seriously, it's just a quick cleanup. You'll be back on your break and gossiping in 10 minutes. Just clean it before I have to sit back down. She stamped her foot, and I decided to have my say. When else would I ever see her again to get my words out? I didn't even look at her, just started talking. You're either blind or dumb. She doesn't work here. Go talk to them. I pointed towards the concession stand, where a small group of employees were watching the exchange with bated breath and a couple bags of popcorn. She gave me a quick glance, rolling her eyes. I'm not talking to you. Just tell your friend I need my aisle clean before I sit down for this. I'd been thinking about her since our first meeting. I had so many comebacks make their way to me in the shower, but only stood out at that moment. I went with it. Do you need a doctor? They don't fix stupid, but they'll make you pretty enough that it'll distract people when you speak. C was quickly turning red. Her forehead had started to glow an ugly shade of pink. Excuse you? She looked at Gina again, taking a full step forward and prompting us both to give each other a glance. Where's your manager? Bring him here right now. I couldn't believe she only had those ears for decoration. Didn't listen to a single effing thing. Do it yourself. Come on. I grabbed Gina and started to push her in front of me. We almost made it when I felt a forceful clawed hand on my arm. C was still screaming. I said get the manager, right now. I decided to match her screams. Yo, get the F off of me, what's wrong with you? I told Gina to get the manager as well. She ran to the counter and the audience scattered, save for two or three employees who wanted to know what was happening. Good old C still hadn't released me from her grip. I retched my arm out of her grasp and realized that Ciasaurus had not been graced with balance. She stumbled backwards twice and fell, directly on her A, into a Wreck-It Ralph promotional cutout. The manager arrived just in time to watch her flail and plop onto the floor. The woman started to ask questions. Was she alright? Did she require medical attention? But none of that could be answered. 
As soon as Siasaurus saw the manager in the flesh, she started bawling. I stared at Gina, who had stayed near the counter with the other employees, while I listened to the crybaby and her crocodile tears. All I was able to make out between sobs was, employee, pushed, theater, and lying. The manager was still trying to calm her down. She stretched out a hand to help her up, but C waved it away, still choking out cries of supposed anguish. I'm sorry, what was that? The tears were beginning to subside. She pushed me. She gasped between whimpers, pointing at me and then whipping quickly to Gina, and she refused to help me. Your employee. Manager lady looked at Gina and then back down to the floor, a mask of confusion evident. I'm sorry, who refused to help you? Our entitled star seemed to realize she wasn't being clear and switched tactics. She gestured to me again. Her friend, that girl over there. The manager was giving glances between C and Gina and still looked befuddled. Um, she doesn't work here. And then, silence. It was like a switch had been flipped. The sobbing actress on the floor was suddenly still focusing on the manager and not looking anywhere else. I, she started to stutter, but then stopped. She looked back up to me. My presence seemed to give her the strength to struggle to her feet. She assaulted me. She shoved me into the poster. You need to call the police. I just shook my head. You can check the cameras. She grabbed me. Manager lady agreed and started motioning us to come with her to the back of house. Suddenly, Siasaurus was no longer interested in checking the cameras. She just wanted to get back to her movie, she kept repeating, and speed limped away. Manager lady apologized and offered us some free snacks, but we assured her everything was fine, and I gave everyone the first story of my run-in with the lovely Siasaurus. Laughs were had. I caught a glimpse of her leaving the theater from one of the side doors, clearly not up for walking past the front again to accuse another person of working there. And that was that. I wouldn't need to see her ever again, right? I was so sure of it, until yesterday at my actual job. The last story is, I don't work here anymore, and no, I will not come into work. Last holiday season, I worked seasonally for Target. It was a disaster from the start. The managers had absolutely no organization whatsoever. I should have known when they scheduled me for my second interview, and the manager didn't even show up, I was screwed. Towards the end of the holiday season, after Christmas and before New Year's, they offered me a non-seasonal part-time position. I was going to accept, but they wanted me to work a ton for part-time, and being a college student, they were not willing to be flexible at all. So I said, nope, I'm done after my last day on January 6th. Everything was good after I was done with that train wreck, and I was starting off my second semester. January 20th at 5pm I get a call from Target. Manager, hey, this is blank, are you running a little late? You were supposed to work at 4.30. Me, um, no, I quit over three weeks ago. Manager, uh, well, we're really short-staffed, can you come in anyway? Me, no, I don't work there anymore, I told you that and I'm at school. Manager, are you sure you can't come in anyway? Thank goodness I'm done with that disaster, and since this holiday season is coming up, I got a job at a different place, thank goodness. Yes, hung up the phone and never went back, I was honestly speechless. I go to school 30 minutes away from where I live, slash where the target was, and I could have come in, but still, ridiculous. I had quit a long time ago. I hope you enjoyed those stories. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on all notifications.